Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign, featuring Jacob as Schmidt with his far-fetched Quacko, Melissa as Cindy with her Vulpix Soul Eater, Grace as Elodie with her Milsery Cabbage, and CJ as Gimli with his Roggenrola Trevor. My name is Rich and I'm the Game Master, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. Where last we left off, you all made it to Cindy's grandparents' home, the Berry Farm on Route 123. Upon arriving, you found a dwelling that was slightly disturbed. Goji and Asai were nowhere to be seen, and piles of unopened mail, including Cindy's letter addressed to her beloved guardians written the day prior, were identified. You found a displaced floorboard that took you to a basement hallway of Cindy had previously never known existed. You came across a large stone door with runic engravings that was sealed by a lock opened by entering the date of Cindy's birth. Behind this door, you found a cavern underneath the main plot of the berry farm. The room is dark, damp, and constantly writhing in uncontrollable vine growth, attempting to find purchase in the heels of our heroes. The vines stretch all over the floor, all over the walls, and up to the ceiling where they meet with the roots of dozens of berry trees above you. All the vines originate from a single point in the center of the far wall where a monster resides, seemingly sewn into the structure of this underground chamber. The monster bears a slight resemblance to Pumpkin, a childhood friend of Cindy's. However, the resemblance is exactly that, slight. It's a 12-foot yellow bulb featuring an upward-facing toothed mouth complete with rows of circular teeth and a constant ooze of purple sludge drooling out. Uh, it addresses our eclectic party members in the dank darkness with its immense sharp and thorny leaves that decorate its mouth and the sides of its body. With every breath this verdant behemoth takes, the entire room pulsates and breathes along with it. Cindy and Schmidt have already been pulled down and rendered prone by the wild vines that cover every surface. As Schmidt prepares to instruct Quacko to make an attack, you may all roll initiative. I will give you a bonus attack with Quacko at the start of this turn because Quacko's out and you initiated combat. This will not count as a sneak attack, but you do just to do something before anything else happens. Actually, I'm not rolling to hit it. Because you're going to aerialize. Because I'm going to aerialize. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. That's five damage because my rolls are trash. And I'm you doubled your rolls, right? Times. Oh, I do double my rolls. It's super effective. Um, Add four to whatever I just said, so nine. Okay, yeah. Good way to start it off. Um, Quacko leaps into the air and slashes at Pumpkin with his leak, and a little streak of purple blood seems to ooze out a little bit. Gimli gets to go first in the proper initiative here. Let's Does it see. have to be Cindy's turn for her to cry, or can she cry as a reaction? I think we established <laughs> it in like the second session that you can cry whenever you want. She she is yeah, crying the whole time. Action. Let okay. me just start with she's already crying. Great. Um, so I guess I'll bring because I don't know about Lebowski yet. So I'll bring out Trevor and Toidal. Uh, I want to sand attack with Trevor. It passes natural nineteen. Uh, yawn into the victory bell. Okay. Again, we've had good success with that in the past, so you can yeah. keep it up. That move always <laughs> connects. Um, Pumpkin will use a legendary resistance to shrug it off. It is not affected oh. by Yawn. Interesting. Um, okay. Does Gimli want to do anything? Am I in proximity of my compadres who are covered in vines? Yes. Yeah, you're okay. all within like a 20-foot row, and um, Cindy and Schmidt are currently prone. They're kind of like... Okay, I want to use my pickaxe to kind of like rip apart the vines. Like not so much like hammer into them, because that would be dangerous and require dextra, sure. but like more like hook under and pull them to try to break them. Okay, then yeah, then you're rolling strength because you're trying to pull the vines. That's a 16. Yeah, who who are you freeing? Uh, I'll get Schmidt up. Okay, you do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Cindy? I'll have Soli use Ember. We'll target Pumpkin. I'll just stay stuck in the vines, except my fate. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, I think it's still going to get you out. It's fine. Well, that's a hit. It's, I will tell you all in advance. Um, I keep saying Pumpkin. I shouldn't say Pumpkin. This is not exactly Pumpkin. This is something else. Uh, it's implanted into the wall, so it's not going to be that hard to hit for a boss, just so you know. Uh, that's, that's fair. That yeah. makes sense. 18 to hit that definitely hits roll your damage it's super effective so whatever your dice are double them seven a little gout of flame comes out of soli's throat and singes the leaves on this super messed up victory bell's body it lets out a little shriek so can i have uh jack come out as well mm -hmm. 
Jack's out. He goes, meow. And he's instantly quite scared, but he's also brave, so he's not scared. <laughs> brave nature. He's like almost scared, yes. but like, I'm too brave for this. Exactly. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Uh, just another aerial ace? Yep. Okay, let's see it. Ooh. Ooh. Ow. Max roll on one and five on the other. Not and then bad. it's plus four. Yeah. So 15. Nice. Solid Ooh. hit. Quacko manages to dig that leak right into the same spot where he swiped before, and this corrupted monstrous victory build lets out another horrifying shriek and it spews a bunch of poisony sludge everywhere have quacko make a dexterity save to not be drenched in venom plus three that's a five quacko gets slightly drenched in venom quacko takes six points of poison damage oh that's not as bad as does, does not get the poison condition but t- took a little bit of a bounce back there um, is Schmidt's going to do anything himself? Or I guess we'll try to pull the vines off Cindy. Do, yeah, describe how you're doing it. Are you just like loosely pulling the... Am I not rolling for it? Or... You are, you, but I'm trying to what describe what, what, what your check is. Okay. It's probably um, dex because you're just, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of like a dexterous way to do this. Like I almost want to say like it's just a raw strength check because like what else would I do? Yeah, however you describe it is what you're going to do. If you're just going to pull at it, you just can just, just pull, at, pull it. at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I rolled a 19, but yeah. that's a minus one. <laughs> so it's still an 18. But... Yeah, that's still enough. That's still fine. You managed to loose okay. the vines off of Cindy's body and she is now mobile. Nicely done. Ooh. Elodie, what's up? Elodie uh, is going to try and get a closer look at Pumpkin to see if there's any like sort of devices or anything okay. on it. Sure. Um, yeah, roll it. I suppose you're investing. So or, sorry, investigating. I'm investing. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a stockbroker now. Yes. <laughs> I got a nat 20, baby. Nat 20. Let's go. Cool. Yeah, once again, you can see that you can tell that this is a victory bell, but it's not just like a regular victory bell. This thing is way bigger than victory bells usually are, and it has more features. It is extra thorny. It is extra acidy, goopy. It has way more vines coming out of it, and you can see that it's more or less fused its back into a slot in the wall behind it. And from this wall, you can tell that where all these vines, like they're almost geometric, like on the part of the room that you are at your feet and on the walls, the vines are sprawling everywhere. From directly behind Pumpkin, they move out in sharp angles. And underneath the vines, you can see a series of markings in stone that match the pattern. So there's like right behind Pumpkin, there's all these sharp angled lines coming out all over the place that the vines are growing out of. That's interesting to yeah. note. <laughs> um, Which Pokemon did you bring with you? I feel like you have your water cabbage. types. Okay. <laughs> I, I only I'm, have Cabbage Owl right now. I have a few water um, <laughs> I think I'm going to leave the other two uh, in, in, their, in their balls for now. Okay. I don't know if it's spewing like poison. Yeah, it might not be a good time for Cabbage either. Oh, you're right. Uh... You don't want to give him a big kiss with all that ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'll do. I, I guess I'll just sweet scent it right now. Just the basic move description. You're not trying to like get an effect or anything. I guess we could go for an effect. Just sort of like a calming scent. Okay. Maybe something reminiscent of the berry farm. Mm. Of. That we're you already know. in. Yeah. You know that's true. I don't know. We're in the basement, though. It might not be uh, potent. Um, yeah, uh, regardless, uh, uh, this creature passes its charisma check. It got a natural 16. Doesn't have a nose. <laughs> yeah, it can't smell. <laughs> you know, that's kind of true. So much, so much charisma, it forgot how to smell. Um, wait, real quick. Can I have Cabbage use Sunspiration? It is a reaction. Can I have her use it on, like, Cindy herself? Absolutely. Okay, I will do that. Cool. Yeah, you, you can use inspiration a number of times equal to Cabbage's Charisma modifier, which is either two or three, right? Yeah, it's three right now. Okay, so you get three uses of that. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So, yeah, so say you get uh, one D6 that you can add to any roll. Including a damage roll? Any roll. Ooh. And you can do it after it's rolled, cool. too, but you have to do it before I declare what happens. Ah. Uh, um, it is now this creature's turn. Mm, this creature has gotten whacked around by a duck with a sword and is not having a good time. It's going to do two things this turn. 
its first order of business is to scatter spores. Um, I'm going to require each Pokemon to make a constitution saving throw. Every Pokemon on the field. And simultaneously, it'll focus a point of green and yellow light in front of its body. Actually, uh, Sweet Veil on Cabbage. So yeah. nobody can fall asleep. That's true. So wait, does Cabbage or nobody? It's What's the range on that? Uh, 15 feet. Yeah, but that's basically all y'all. Woo! All right, oh, no nice. rolls. <laughs> Um, right. okay. yeah, I saved that's... my crit for the next roll I made. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no crits. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, those are its two actions that it gets this turn, and we're gonna go back to Gimli. Uh, we are going to try the maneuver. Ooh, let's uh, go. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're loaded up, Trevor, into the shot. <laughs> Toidles tuck it in. We're ready to fire. I want to offer this to you two different ways. I've been thinking about this mechanic. Uh, so you can either roll skill checks for each individual mm. thing, or you can roll two d8. Okay. Okay. And the the face of each d8, the closer they are to each other, the better result you'll have. Oh, I like that. Okay. So you could just do that. Like one d8 is Trevor, and one d8 is Toidal. Okay, I got a seven and a five. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. It will work. All right. Okay. That, that's a. I like that. That's a cool way to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it's like combo attacks. Yeah, yeah, they're cooperating. They have to be in sync. Right. OK, we're we're ready to fire. We're going to so so describe it and then we'll figure out how you roll damage for this. So Torkoal's basically because Trevor's tucked in front of the mouth hole where it would fire. Basically, the flame is building up and uh-huh. then eventually it becomes too much pressure and will launch Trevor. So basically, it's like a combination of Trevor becoming like kind of like a jet propelled rock with like fire coming at it from behind, uh-huh. just launching into the victory bell head on so it's kind of like a fire based headbutt roll a regular headbutt and um, then an, an additional die of damage that's fire type 3d12 and then the modifier on headbutt yeah the yeah. single modifier okay so 27 i feel like you described that pretty well but everyone is amazed because i don't think they unless they listen to the recent session mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think they know exactly uh <laughs> what what we were talking about but it's true yeah. coital loads up rog and rolla into one of the slots in in her shell and charges up steam and flame energy and trevor looks prepared as all heck for this and toidal launches trevor directly into the wall where this crazy messed up victory bell is sewn in and a just a fiery ball of trevor smacks into the side of victory bell for a whopping 27 damage very nice noticing Mm -hmm. that it's coming out of the wall i think this might be digging time okay i'm going to attempt to Dig not into the victory bell, but like dig around it to see if I can get to a like a hollow point. Dislodge this thing from sure. the wall if I can get behind it. Yeah, this so, so you can go for it. This is a dangerous maneuver. If you fail, you will have consequences. Absolutely. Uh, I got 12. As you wield your pickaxe and go up for the swing, mutilated pumpkin can see out of the side of its eye what you're trying to do and lashes at you with a fine whip. And Gimli's going to take eight points of damage as a long thorny lash of a vine smacks into his side and draws blood it hurts a lot it sucks Uh, 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 cindy it's you all right jack is going to use fire fang Ooh, new action from your new member yes and it can cause pumpkin to flinch or get burned both nat 20 nat 20 so that is in fact it does burn and flinch a critical hit but super effective as well. Yeah, you're going to roll a ton of damage for this. Uh, for nine. someone who was crying earlier, you're really uh, murdering this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and nine. Uh, I'm so bad at math. 20, nine, uh, nine, and three. Okay, 29, nine, three is 41. Okay, 41. Yeah. This creature takes a huge hit as Cindy lets out a command and Jack unleashes its first attack in this campaign. A critical hit. It leaves it burnt, and the beam that it is charging is no longer charging. It's smoldering a little bit, and it is leaking sludge everywhere. Um, Jack did get up close and personal to this sludge. Have it make a constitution save. (laughs) Three. It's going to take ten points of poison damage and is now poisoned. Oh, no. Solely, I guess we can have her ember as well. Fourteen to hit. Yeah, that hits. Or 10, 11, 11 damage. Okay. A really nice hit from Soli there. Um, Cindy is able to do a thing if she pleases. 
I, I think she's just like still in shock of everything that is currently happening. Yeah. Schmidt? The plan is simple. We are going to Aerialist. You know, it is the same song and dance, but like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. True. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is broken, but I'm not going to fix it. Plus four, 12. Another slash from Quacko's leak will draw even more purple sludgy blood from this creature that splashes onto Quacko. Make a con save. Making a con. That's a 17 okay. plus one. Yeah, you only take two points of poison damage. From... Ooh, you're still taking it. Okay. This creature is looking very angry. It starts to breathe heavier and it lashes its vines around um, the the whole room being covered in vines. The vines writhe faster under your feet. You can feel just constant squirming and writhing of plant life and foliage all around you. Uh, Schmidt, what else are you doing? Hanging out. Maybe getting like a white claw or something. Yeah, there's no white claws in here, but <laughs> cracks, cracks open the white claw that he just has. <laughs> He, you know, maybe doesn't, maybe he's just reflecting on the LaCroix that he got from Melon Key from earlier. Oh, true. That's what it was. I do. Oh, uh, yes. The, the Lime LaCroix. LaCroix. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lime LaCroix. Perfect. Moving on then. Elodie, what are you doing? If, I guess, uh, I can't really ask if I were to use Encore, what would happen? I guess we'd have to find out. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take out Poplio, but I'm going to hold Hold her in my arms and mm-hmm. instruct her to use Encore. Okay. That's very cute. Uh, <laughs> what's the save? What's the DC? Wisdom, I believe, is an 11. Okay. This creature gets a natural 12. Will not be affected oh. by this Encore, but I'll tell you what. The rest of the party is affected by it because it's really cute and it's a little bit of optimism in this very dark time. As uh, as Elodie just sends out her new seal friend and instructs her to use Encore, it just sits... In her outstretched arms, clapping its fins and bork, and it's just so cute. It's just great, but it doesn't affect this monster. Is Cabbage doing anything? I'm gonna go for a fake tears this time. Okay. So that's another wisdom saving throw, but this time the DC is 12. Okay. But this time they rolled a nat 15. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> Dang. Pumpkin with the good rolls. Pumpkin would like to continue these good rolls as it twirls its side leaves and unleashes a barrage of leaves to every creature on this field. Every creature before before this happens, like did the flinch affect any of this? Was that just to cancel the solar beam? It just canceled solar beam. OK, I was just curious. cool. Um, a barrage of leaves will slice into every single creature. Tell me who gets a 15 or higher. Yes, I'm sorry. It's a deck save. Oh, which is well, good for Krakow, Schmidt. crit as he always does. OK. <laughs> On saving throws, and Schmidt get a 19. Are we creatures? Yes. Roll for yourselves. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Trevor got a 19. Okay. So he's fine. But Toidle and Gimli both got below. So. Okay. Poplio got um, a 16, but me me and Cabbage got below. Okay. Okay. So me and Soli failed, and Jack passed. Okay. So every Pokemon that saved is going to take. 11 points of grass damage. Every Pokemon Wait, that made the save that made the save. Wait, is it resisted? If it's yes, Quacko will resist okay. it and, and humans resist it as well. The so humans, wait, wait, wait. how does resist with odd numbers work? Uh, you round down, you take the lower result. Round down. If, if the person failed, they're going to take 10 points. And if they saved, they're going to take five. Oh, I'm rolling for sturdy, by the way. Let me see if I pass. Oh, wait, that's above half my health. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of math for something that can be described very simply. A torrent of sharp leaves shoot out of this Pokemon monstrosity, latch into the wall, and cut up every single thing on the field here. It will not take any other actions this turn, as that is an expensive action for it. However, it lets out another blood-curling shriek. It is very upset. It's Gimli's turn. So Trevor is going to try Sand Attack again, mm-hmm. 12 con DC. Okay, they got a, exactly a nat 12, so they have extra con, so they passed. Okay, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to actually harden in preparation for combo move again. Great, you do that. Trevor fires off a little cloud of sand, doesn't seem to affect this creature, and then hardens its carapace in anticipation for mm-hmm. the next attack. Mm-hmm. Then in the meantime, Toidal is going to Ember. Uh, does an 18 hit? Yeah, it does. 11 damage. Another big hit into... This messed up victory bell. Do me a favor, Gimli. Just roll a roll a d20. I'm not going to tell you for what. Just roll one. Nat 20. This harden that you have instructed Trevor to do 
it's not like any Harden you've seen before. He is looking so resilient and so firm. Little bits of dirt and pebbles are rising up out of the ground and attaching to his body as he's hardening. It is a very, very good Harden. Uh oh. Cindy. All right, we're going to have Jack use Fire Fang again. It's 18, 10, plus 3, 13 damage. Okay. A pretty Actually, let me add my Sunspiration also. Sure. Get some extra damage in there. That's two more damage. So 15, hey, it's, 15 damage. It's damage. something. In, in these yeah. kinds of situations, we take that. Um, yep. Yeah, another bit of flame fires off. Latches onto Pumpkin, lets out another scream, and it's wiggling a lot. It is writhing quite a bit. The vines beneath you are going crazy. Is Cindy doing anything else? Uh, Soli's going to use Ember. Uh, 16 to hit. Okay, yep. Yeah. 9. This thing is looking very, very upset. Anything else with your turn, Cindy? Uh, Cindy's going to like pull out the rock again and see if there's any... Like effect because it was glowing before, so like just to see if there anything happens. Yeah, just roll a d twenty, just straight. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, it's there's two diamonds on it. They're glowing a very rich green, um, and the whole stone seems to be trembling. I know Elodie did this last turn, but if I bring out another Pokemon, would I be able to act with both of my Pokemon? Yes, but Schmidt wouldn't do anything. Okay, like Schmidt's action would be that. sending something out. I would like to send out Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Um, and Jessica's going to use Helping Hand okay. on Quacko. Ooh. Uh-oh. Quacko's going to hit him with a nice aerial ace. Okay. Ha, ha, cha, cha, cha. So, that's, so I'm curious. That extra D6 doesn't get doubled on no, Super Effective. No, right? no, no. Helping Hand is so Helping it's Hand. it's just 3D6 plus 4. Yep, yep, yep. 15. Yeah, that's still a great hit. That's still amazing. Yeah. Um, Quacko is in melee range. Is going to have to take a con save against the resulting poison ooze. Yep, 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 yep. Plus one, twelve. Yep. Only, only taking uh, three points of poison damage from the resulting splash of poison. You can see that after that aerial ace, uh, again, the vines are writhing like crazy, and especially the ones that are closest to this creature, but it's also gradually starting to loosen itself from the purchase it's found in this wall here. Elodie. I'm going to put Poplio back in her Pokeball. Yes. <laughs> and with Cabbage, can I try and use Sweet Scent to um, lure it away from the wall? Like try and like to give it a very alluring scent. Yeah. Uh-huh. Charisma save. 18. Ah, okay. It's just not working out for cabbage today. Cabbage? The scents just aren't cutting it. This thing is so used to scents, it doesn't care about these sweet scents at all. Smelly, smelly, dank basement. Anything else yeah. you want to do? Suppose it wouldn't hurt to give somebody a sensepiration. One, two, Schmidt. What does it smell like? Uh, it smells like that um, um, boy. It's like a, it's a oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna be, gonna gonna be like saying? a like a fancy like Versace cologne. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no, you're right. It is a Versace cologne. Yeah, it's so inspiring um, for Schmidt. Yeah, it's like this is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember like the name of the line that it is? A Versace Eros. Yeah, the line, thank you. Eros yeah. flame. Eros, yeah, Eros. for sure. Perfect. That's what we we're looking for. Yeah, you are very inspired. It's awesome. Someone else is inspired on this field. And it is this corrupt mutant victory bell. It lets out the loudest shriek it's let out yet. And it pulls it, pulls it, pulls its body and it flops out of the wall. Um, it turns itself over and faces you all. So it's like, how do I describe this? It almost looks like a quadruped. There are vines coming out of its body that stretch into the ground. And it looks like it has like eight legs now that are just vines that are coming out of the ground. And its mouth is facing towards you all. It lets, oh. la- it lets out a shriek and vines shoot up from all over everyone, and all of the people have to make a deck save. All the people, not the Pokemon? All the people. And you know what? Yeah, sure. All the Pokemon, too. All the ones that aren't flying or have wings. Thanks. Thanks for that, Schmidt. damn it. I'm oh, sorry. Why would you say that? No, it's okay. <laughs> floating, so I'm What's good. the DC? Uh, it's going to be 15. 
Okay. All right. Cindy failed. Mm-hmm. Soli failed. Passed. And Jack failed. Woo! Oh, no. what, was the, what was the DC again? 15. Everybody except Jessica passed. Okay. So let's see who. Was fell. Jessica flying? No. Jessica was helping with the hand. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. So Gimli passed Roger and Trevor and Toy failed. Okay. Every creature who failed just gets immediately restrained by vines and this victory bell creature that is now looking like an arachnid lets out another shriek and it runs immediately up towards jack and whips it with vines dealing only eight damage eight oh my god damage after resistances it rolls up to soli and also deals eight damage it rolls up to cindy slaps cindy across the face dealing four damage goes up to jessica slaps with vines deals eight damage goes up to toidle Slaps it with vines across the face. Deals four damage. Goes up to Trevor. Trevor deflects the blow. Trevor isn't having this. No. Trevor starts hardening harder and is encompassed by a glowing white light. Super hardened. <laughs> it lightens up the dark chamber and the victory belt shrieks in recoil as its target refused to take damage. Too firm. Trevor has evolved into a Boldor and gets an extra oh, action this what? turn. I have sent you a Whoa. new character sheet for oh, Trevor the Boldor. <laughs> oh, cool. That's right now. All right. Face to face <laughs> with an octopedal victory bell whose mouth is gaping right in front of it, dripping sludge and ooze. Battered and burned. <laughs> What's Boldor going to do? Oh my god, is it time for it finally to hit a rock blast? Let's see it. Please hit it. For for sure. Uh oh yeah, that's a 18. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got four hit. Okay, we got all five hits. Okay, roll the damage. Okay, roll the damage. <laughs> 17. Wow. Pretty solid hit. Yeah. So you all just witnessed as Trevor the Little Rog and Roller glowed a bright white light after hardening very intensely and is now about twice the size. Um, It's nice and wide. It looks very heavy and it has all of these particles of dirt and rock that are floating around it as it seems to have increased its mass. It's almost like it has its own orbit of dust particles. And you watch as it empties five large boulders straight down the gullet of this eight legged victory bell monster. Just boom, 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 straight down the throat. And it tries to shriek, but it cannot. And it Flops over on its back and it continues writhing and the vines are going crazy. You can notice that as this thing is more or less on its back, right? Um, Attached Uh to its back is a rectangular object that is glowing the same color as the stone that Cindy has. Um, We're back over to Gimli. Boldor can go again. We just readied ourselves for our ability. Let's see if we can actually get this combo attack now that Boldor's bigger. Sure. Wait, <laughs> didn't Boulder just use Rock Tomb? Yeah, it was a bonus. But it was a bonus action for evolving. Yeah. Bonus, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so we'll do the 2d8. How close are we? Two and four. Yeah, it yeah, works. Yeah, because it's, it's range, right? That's yeah. how we're doing that? Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, Okay. We're, we're readying it up. Fire it up. Now it's time it's bigger, so. <laughs> yeah. So your, your <laughs> headbutt damage should mm-hmm. have increased, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's much higher. Yeah. So what is it now? Um, so it's 2d plus 4, so instead you're yeah. going to roll uh, 5d8 plus 4. 28? Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. Horkle charges up its body once again and slots in this time a much larger rock into its shell and with a blast, a fiery explosion, launches Trevor the Boldor towards this eight-legged victory bell that's writhing around on the ground, dealing a massive, massive blow. It is not down for the count. It is still very, very furious, and it is going to send a vine whip now, this time, at Cabbage, dealing 12 damage. Okay, that's fine. As Cabbage gets raked across the face with a sharp, thorny vine. Is it is it rolled over right now? Yes. Can... Can I attempt to hog tie it with rope? You can try, sure. Yeah, with Gimli, because I saw my action. So this again, it will be hard and it will be dangerous. You're gonna have to roll quite well. Uh, twenty. Not that a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You manage while this thing is writhing around to um, strap down 
the front part of its body where its mouth is um, to avoid your hand getting bit. Give me a dexterity save. <laughs> oh, we got bit. That's got a bit. that one. And that one, that's really bad. Yeah, that's okay. super bad. Um, Gimli is going to take eight points of poison damage and is poisoned. As while successfully tying down part of this victory bell, um, gets chomped right on the arm. It's blood and poison, and it's awful, and it hurts. So, what are the effects of having this thing tied down now? It's partially tied down. It's it's partially restrained. Um, I know. I'm just like wondering for the rest of the party what yeah. that entails. You know, it's gonna have a harder time moving around. Cindy, I'm gonna pull Jack, like return Jack because he's he has one HP. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Jack's Jack's coming back. Can I let out? Yeah, that would be your. Yeah, Cookie yeah. wouldn't be able to do anything because you're doing a complete switch, right? You can still yeah, solely yeah. do something, though. Okay, so Cookie will come out because Cookie also resists grass damage. So mm -hmm. that's Actually, remind me Cookie's ability. It's Sap Sipper, right? Yes. I believe you're immune to grass damage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Broken. Yeah, that's kind of really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Soli is going to uh, Ember. 18 to hit. That'll do it. 10 damage. Victory Bell lets out another terrible scream and continues writhing again in pain. The vines beneath your feet are going crazy. They're almost pushing you backwards. Another one stretches up out of the ground and lashes out towards Quacko. Dealing oh no. uh, 10 points of grass damage, so 5 points of damage to Quacko as he gets whipped across the back by a, an unsuspecting vine behind him. Um, I don't know. That's Cindy's full action. Schmidt, what are you doing? How close is this thing to like dying? Uh, you could roll to try and find out. Like investigation. Okay. That would that would be Schmidt's thing. His Pokemon can still do stuff. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, what kind of roll is it? Investigation. Uh, uh, yeah, just give me a straight twenty, and we'll figure it out. Oh, just a straight twenty. I got a twelve. Yeah, twelve. Yeah, this thing. It's it's curious. Like its body is weak, right? But it is. It has an unrelenting power about it. It is just not ready to give up. Um, it is all singed and cut and bashed and its teeth are broken and it's just oozing from all over the place and it wants to retire. It really does, but it just can't yet. Elodie, remind me there is some kind of glowing thing like lodged inside of it or. Yes. Like on its uh, back. Yeah. In its back. It's now facing upwards because it was flipped over. It's hard to tell with the victory bell what direction it is, but. Use the leak as a crowbar to dislodge it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, how much force would it take to get this thing out? If I were to do that, what kind of role would that be? How would you want to do it? You know what? Before, before we, before we tr attempt to make the roll, I would like just kind of helping hand Quacko. Um, and then, yeah, just the leak is a crowbar. Leak is a crowbar. Yeah. Give me, yep. um, it really could be both. I kind of want you to give me both checks. Like I want you to give me a dex and a strength, a dex to get the proper purchase and a strength to see how far you can pull it. Uh, well, both rolls are 19. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to save the helping hand. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. That's fine. Um, yeah, both rolls are 19. Which yeah. With crack Quacko, since he's using his leak, wouldn't it technically count as a crit? Right. Or is that only on attack rolls? Uh, no, he's using his leak. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I, I think that's a crit. I, I think that works. As before, as a reaction, this creature is going to go for a leaf blade. As Quacko is doing this, right into Quacko. Um, does an 18 hit Quacko. Including resistance, that's going to go down to 12 points of grass damage. Quacko, Quacko on like his last leg doing this. Yeah, Quacko basically out of endurance. Flops and flops. Well, maybe he flops. I don't know. <laughs> he he flutters. He flies over on top of this victory bell monstrosity and pries in his leak under this this slate, this tablet, this stone that is etched into this monstrosity's body, and he leverages it just perfectly, critically, one might say. And you can tell as he is sliding it in, the vines begin to retreat. Very, very slowly all around you as he pries and he pries and he pries and it pops. And you hear the sound of stone hitting clay sediment and streams of green energy 
fly out from all around it as it gradually shrinks and shrinks and shrinks in size. It's monstrosity characteristics. It's extra leaves, it's extra teeth begin to fade away. And before you, you see a limp, sad, mangled, normal sized victory bell just breathing heavily on the ground. You are out of initiative. What do you do? Pumpkin! Do you run up to Pumpkin? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do you intend to do anything? You just want to embrace it? You just want to... Give, yeah, give, a, give Pumpkin a hug. Okay. Um, we, we, we have a healer on our team, right? That's me. Yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, can I can we, run can over we, and... Can we, can we heal? <laughs> sure. I was, like... I was like, can I suck the poison out of my body already? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, speaking of poison, Cindy, you are hugging a poisonous creature. You have to make a con save. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, uh, I got a, a five. Yeah. What's we, the roll? It's a constitution save. That's a minus one, so four. Yeah. And then this one is ten. Uh, so you would take a certain amount of poison damage, but this thing is in a very different state. Yeah, you take one point of poison damage. It kind of stings where you were whipped, right? It's, you have little mm. little cuts on your on your body. It's you, you embrace pumpkin and it hurts, it burns, but you do it for the love anyways. You you pull your head back a little bit and you can see its eyes. You're basically eye to eye here. Um, and it slipped out of the restraints that Gimli made because it's shrunk in size about about three times. And you look and you recognize pumpkin's eyes, the loving, friendly, sad pumpkin. Uh, other people are trying to do stuff. Yes. I'm trying to suck the poison out of my body. I got a 19, so. Okay. It's, it's just applying self. Okay. I was just going to like. a lot more hardcore than Schmidt. Schmidt's like an LED. Like, he's a yeah, Right, I'm literally biting like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got bit on the head, so I'm just going to like literally just hardcore suck it out. 19 <laughs> I, will, I, will, will do it. Oh, that's kind of yeah, wild. I was, I was like, well, I technically got. 23 25 with survival so like <laughs> we're doing it <laughs> yeah uh, uh, cindy has two hp uh-huh and she's exhausted yes <laughs> so yeah. she's probably like laying on the floor now yep <laughs> how do you heal people can i like heal the people yeah what what describe how you would do it like what, what's your intention here and apply bandages yeah to wound? Apply bandages <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah. Go to whoever you're you're doing that to make a medicine check. So I definitely Cindy. Um, and I guess Gimli took a lot of damage from poison. Schmidt, did you take? No, but Quacko's really hurt. Okay, I can I'm do like holding the Quacko in my hands, like out towards Elodie. Like Quacko, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> I'll get to Quacko in a sec. Let me just roll this for the people first. Wait, what am I rolling? Uh, medicine. I just... You you have a passive okay. too. I don't know if it's applicable here. Aromatherapy. What are the details on that again? Just when you heal, it's more effective, right? Yeah, it's just healing effects administered by Elodie and her Pokemon level three and higher recover an additional die of HP. Okay, but these are just kind of generic. Okay, we'll give you a bonus. Yeah, it, it's it makes more sense on like potions and stuff, but we're just kind of doing general doctor things, so you, you'll do it better for sure. Um, what did you roll for Quacko? So I guess for Quacko, I got a thirteen. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you managed to, at the very least, stabilize Quacko. It, he is in a position where he's not likely to fall below 1 HP. He's battered, he's hurt, but he's doing all right. He has a little bandage wrapped around one of his legs, and um, he, his feathers are a little ruffled, and you managed to mat them down a little bit. Um, and if anything, his confidence is doing fine. That was never really threatened, honestly. No, no, no. Can I heal, like, Gimli and Cindy, too? Yeah, it'll be individual medicine checks. For Cindy, I got a dirty 20, and then for Gimli, I got a 12. Okay. For Cindy, you managed to, you have some cloth of some sort. Maybe it's a part of your apron that you've peeled. I don't know. But you managed yeah, to mat that. out some uh, toxic ooze that managed to find its way into Cindy's cuts. And uh, she's doing a little bit better. Again, you're not really healing here, but you're stabilizing their condition. You try to help Gimli, but like he's kind of on top of it. Uh, he kind of he kind of already helped himself in a ridiculous way. Um, you <laughs> offer him some some wrapping, but he's he's kind of fine. I'm fine. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, the vines are gradually retreating. There's only a few left that kind of dangle off of the far wall where Victory Bell was planted. Um, you can still see the roots above you from the berry trees. They're just dangling down into the room. And as the vines pull back, exposed are a bunch of storage shelves and a figure who is leaning up against the wall. It looks humanoid. Oh, no. 
Did the door is still closed? No, the there was the door was open. It's just covered in vines. The door is now the vines have retreated. So, do we engage or do we just nope out of here? Well, I mean, we made it. We did all this. Might as well climb in the hole. There's no okay. hole. Sorry, oh, I thought you just described like the a hole. doorway, metaphorical hole. Okay, no, there's no new doorway. It's the door you came into, right? Oh, there's no doors in I... here. Um, there's a person who is slumped against the back corner of the wall, closest uh, oh, to. Yeah. Oh. And there, um, there's a victory bell that is hurt. There's a Cindy that is just kind of exhausted, crying, defeated. Uh, not really defeated because succeeded in this, but just crushed mentally. And there is a rectangular rock as well. Call out to the humanoid figure. Hey, what are, what are you doing down here? There is no response. Uh oh. I'm going to approach this. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, can I investigate? Someone can. Yeah, because maybe you should tend to pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. go tend to pumpkin. You can go do that. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll walk I'll over. Go, I'll walk with have... you just in case. But yeah, like, yeah, we'll yeah. go. Yeah. Roll an investigation. investigation. Yeah. I'm, I'm not very bright in investigating, so I'm just here to make sure you're okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much appreciated. Mm-hmm. Okay, dirty twenty. Yeah, you see exactly what this is. This is a person who is wearing a uniform that you are not unfamiliar with. It is the same looking uniform that Alexander, the <sighs> Team Energy Grunt, was wearing at the Weather Institute. They do not have a visor on their face, but they're wearing the same kind of skin tight gray clothing. There's a little yellow insignia on their chest. Their skin is ghostly pale. And you notice something incredibly disturbing. Where their eyes are, are no eyes, but blooming flowers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's so dead. <laughs> he's, he's so dead. Oh, no. All right, two dead bodies in a day. <laughs> Do you want to go bury him? We gonna bury him? You can take him outside. Gonna bury him. Um, he's underground. He's uh yeah, he's already like becoming like a like a like a pot for this plant that's growing out of him. I think we could just leave. He's literally a corpse flower. What do you mean? <laughs> Cindy calls out, bury him by the berries. It'll be good fertilizer. The wow. burial. That's a burial. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I hate it here. Before we okay. A we're gonna have we're going to request Gimli drag the body out. Yeah, that's that's fine. Guys, I'm gonna because uh, Schmidt is not touching that. Right. Um, I, we would like to it. continue to investigate other things in the room sure. sure i'll should i take this body outside while you guys investigate that would have yeah, been no. you want to check its pockets first maybe <laughs> oh my <laughs> god no, i'm sorry no 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 it's for like <laughs> evidence information for information, information. Yes, i'm not a quote, criminal air quotes evidence <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Cindy just like buried a body saying it was good fertilizer. Apparently, everyone here is just a criminal. <laughs> We're all just evil. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll loot it first. What the no, heck? Not loot it. I just I want to know if there's like a controlling device or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll I guess I'll rummage through the pockets because like Schmidt won't touch him. So give me a rummage. What what is a rummage? Investigation. <laughs> Okay, I don't have bonus in that. What is that? Int? Oh, oh. <laughs> dude, I got, a, I got a two. You got a two? Yeah. Interestingly, so, rather than any objects or anything, his pockets are full of soil. Oh, weird. All right, well, time to pick up this dude. Strength check, here we go. No, you, you uh, do it. You do it. It's a oh, dead okay. weight. You're strong. You do it. I, I am big strong. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I, I, I'll guess go about the place. I'll Take this outside. <laughs> it's got soil in his pockets. Go make good fertilizer. <laughs> Damn. I'm worried about us. I, yeah, that we're are, mentally are we disturbed. The bad guys? I mean, I just bit my hand open and suck poison out. I don't think, I don't think I'm think i this about last week. <laughs> Can we update Can we the Sussers to include the Schmidt pack? Ourselves, yeah. <laughs> Sus list us. Ourselves. This is, this, going, is so, this is so us, guys. That's going right under the stone. Yeah, we're just going to uh, bring this corpse upstairs so you guys can investigate the room cleanly. You do you. Cindy will grab the rock that came out of Pumpkin and put it with the other rock. Okay, I'm going to have you do a couple things here. Um, just roll okay. a straight okay. d20 here. 
Uh, 16. Okay. As you lift up this rock from the ground, um, you can see from directly under it a little patch of grass that immediately withers as you remove the rock. Oh. Do you oh. place it next to the glowing, trembling stone that you were given by the silver fox? Yes. Okay. As you position it close by, a glowing white slit opens up. It opens up on the side of the rock that Zoe gave you. Um, it seems to be kind of calling towards this new green rock that you're holding. Do you put them together? Yes. Okay. You put them together, and this new green tablet just it's sucked in, and the diamond-encrusted one that was gifted to you by Zoe stops trembling. It gives a final satisfied green glow, and nothing happens. Oh, stick it back in my backpack. And Anyone else doing stuff? Anyone else? Uh, I'm going to investigate the next thing in the room you said there was some sort of stone the rectangle thing yeah um cindy already dealt with it cindy put it inside oh. the other stone gotcha 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 was there a third thing there's like shells or something or whatever yeah they're i, w- I won't have you roll for them they're pretty inconspicuous uh they have okay. all sorts of stuff if you like want it for some reason there's like shears there's a rake there's a hoe there's like little pots and like uh all sorts of stuff for storage there's like racks there's glass bottles whatever you'd want to look for for as a gardener can yeah. i investigate like the markings on the wall you sure. said there were markings that the, the vines slid did into. You, mm-hmm. did you tend to uh the wounds of no Duncan? uh i'll do that real quick then. Yeah, it was like, I, thought that <laughs> I forgot about that yeah yeah um so i i'll roll a medicine 15 yeah pumpkin is very hurt and is also like it's definitely crying and it's a combination of sad tears and happy tears it's really happy to see cindy but it's like really sad about something else you again you manage to stabilize it you put it in a position where it isn't like suffering um is definitely hurt it could probably use a potion but it's alive and it's okay uh i'm gonna while i'm investigating i'm gonna have like cabbage kind of like chill out with it and like i don't know i guess try and like cheer it up a little bit sure yeah can i get a cabbage charisma check yeah Dirty 20. Yeah. Um, Pumpkin is really happy to hang out with this friend. They're they're just vibing. Cabbage is just cooing and Pumpkin's just like, just (laughs) suffering and Cabbage is just cooing cheerfully. And it's it's helping. It's definitely helping. Mm -hmm. Now, can I like check out the markings on the wall and the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be interesting. Roll me either religion or arcana. Checking with them. Okay, I mean, I think they would be the same for me. 14. You recognize a script that you aren't particularly familiar with, but it has characters that kind of seem similar to the language that you speak. I was going to say, I would suggest everyone go upstairs so we can get berries from the berry farm to just kind of get everybody healed up and recovered and not poisoned and just, like, have a little berry party and funeral. <laughs> berry party and funeral. For um, the man that we do not know. Yeah. For we don't even know person. his name. We'll call him Barry. Oh, oh my god. God. Barry, oh. Barry oh. next to the oh. berries. Oh. Uh, you're in my hell now. Oh, no. Is there any, like, fermented berry juice hanging around? He's looking for wine. <laughs> fermented <laughs> berry. Yeah, give, give, me some, give me some of that wine. Yeah, what's the next course of action? Um, Berry party funeral. Get <laughs> drunk. Forget everything. Berry okay. party funeral. Do we do we all wander upstairs? Well, yeah, I'm already up here. And so. yeah, are we gonna yeah. stay indoors? Or are we gonna go outside to the trees? We're gonna we bring pumpkin too, or pumpkin will follow along. Yeah, pumpkin is able to just kind of like flop very gingerly along. Are you you are you in the house? Are you outside? Oh, we're still in the house currently, right? Yes. Unless you want to go yeah. to the berries, is what I'm asking. You telling all, everybody what the berries are, what they do. Yeah. You all step outside, and amidst all this chaos that you've had the past 24 hours, it is very quiet. The sky is a dim gray, and it's raining very gently, and you all just take a moment, and you just kind of exist in silence for a second. In a moment of reprieve from all of this turmoil, you just enjoy the rain.
Uh, Sydney takes you over to the berry farm. There's some berries and baskets that are already harvested, and there's a lot that are still on trees. It's just a really pleasant light drizzle, and it's like 5 a.m. Cindy, furthermore, is still very tired, but she's able to explain to you what berries do what and whatnot. You enjoy having some berries? Can I get some description of this uh, funeral? Well, somebody needs to dig a hole. So I decided that every time I have to dig something, it's going to appear as some kind of like... I, I don't want to say it's like a cutscene action, but you can definitely visualize it as such. It's like, dig, and then I get like kind of like steam engine coming out of my ears. <laughs> like I'm prepping to dig. <laughs> it's like, and it's like somehow you hear a whistle, but it doesn't seem to come from anywhere. <laughs> and you're like, huh? Yeah. Give me, um, with that flavor, give me your, your dig check. Okay. Dig check. Uh, 13. Okay. Yeah, it's sufficient. You're a little bit more tired than you were yeah. when you dug up um, the gravesite for but the enthusiasm for digging the, never stops. And you're definitely less enthusiastic than when you saw your coworker Alyssa. True. Uh, any, any descriptions for this service? Any eulogies this time? <laughs> I'm just digging the hole, guys. So. Poor Gimli, man. He's set to bury two dead bodies in a day. <laughs> Much worse have been buried in the mines, my friend. <laughs> Much worse. Everyone's too tired for any emotional service. It's just we don't know old. him. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> Battery was probably a bad man. <laughs> he seems to be part of the bad team. Put him in a hole. At least we didn't decide to cremate him. Uh, not, we have plenty of options, but we decided not to cremate him. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to be gentle with this. I just like drop him in. Like, okay. just, yeah, I'm good about that, man. Yeah, he seemed like a bad guy that we don't like. <laughs> At least on the bad team. You do that. Yep. Um, speaking of a new day, I need Gimli to roll a D100. Oh, yeah. 37. You check on your egg. It's it's warm. It's, it's hanging in there. Despite all this action that you've been through, it seems to be mostly undisturbed. It's vibing. I, I mean, I guess I'll wait on this. I was like, I still have rope. Would it be possible to, like, leave Toidle out and tie the egg to Toidle for, like, as a makeshift incubator? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. That'd okay. be kind of crazy. Do, like, a medicine or, like, a MacGyver, like, a dexterity? I don't know. Do you have any justification for a skill that this would work with? I mean, I really don't. That's the issue. Yeah. It's like, I've, like, it's all, like... I don't know, instinctual thing. I'm like, well, like, he will probably, like, make this hatch faster. So I think if I'd, like, tie this to a toad okay. <laughs> to my heat source, like, maybe this will work. I it's think like a, this almost is... a survival instinct thing, but it's not. It's, like, really It's weird. not survival. It's, like, almost right. medicinal in a way. So I'll let you choose right. between dex or wisdom. Um, I'll do wisdom. Uh, 13. You kind of, uh, MacGyver a little hyper egg incubator onto Toidle's back. It's pretty funny looking, but Toidle doesn't mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Motherly instinct kicks in for Toidle. Yeah. Well, like 6am. Yeah. Are we healing everybody with all I the berries? it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah. Proper bed. I know you probably want to go <laughs> like, to bed. It's, like, it's probably like, like 7 or 8 in the morning. Yeah, our like, schedule is time for bed. I do think it's long rest time. Okay. Are we are we outside still, or did we end up on? Yeah, I, I'm assuming that you guys did your burial. You got your berries, and it's still kind of drizzling, which is kind of nice because you're all sweaty and awful feeling. But also, like, if you want to sleep, you got to go inside. Okay. Let's go inside. Okay. Yeah, let's go inside. Take a nap. Okay. Is it nap time? Is it long rest or short rest? It's long rest time. Okay. Long, rest. long rest time. Okay. Cindy desperately needs some some sleep without all the birds. Can I investigate if there is alcohol in the facility? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is, is it a crit? I can't see. It's a, it's a net. Yeah, yeah. It's a crit. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Not only do you find like bottles of a, what is clearly a fermented alcoholic liquid, but you find like barrels with taps in them that is full of what is basically just berry moonshine. There is so much of it. Yeah, <laughs> Schmidt's gonna hit that a little hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's time to hit that a little yeah. hard. I'm we're, definitely we're gonna hit that. Um, roll a con check. On save. Roll a con check. Yeah, I got you. Cindy, everybody who's not. drinking. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you guys are too. Yeah. 30 20. Okay. I'm a beast. Uh, plus con, plus two. Oh, yeah. Also a dirty 20. Okay. I got 15. Okay. Cindy, are you, you probably, I don't know what you're going to do. Cindy is not drinking. Yeah. Cindy wants to sleep. That is totally fair. Cindy is driver. underage. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Cindy is underage. Yeah, you guys. Not that I know what the drinking age in uh, Owen is, but. <laughs> you guys I have, guess you're right. have like a little. Yeah. Gosh. You've been through a lot today, and the three of you are just sitting around sipping on some really, really delicious fermented berry juice. Um, before you go to bed, while you're drinking, what do you guys like talk about? What do you do? I never expected to be on this kind of adventure, but I'm kind of glad it's with you guys, honestly. <laughs> it's been a, a different time than I expected, but it's a heck um, of a time. It's a heck of a vacation, I'll say. <laughs> Later in the night, Schmidt tries to start a drinking game. <laughs> uh have you guys ever seen shanghai noon yeah no okay um the, the i'm gonna drop it in voice text but they do the drinking game for that where they're just like yelling at each other in like a weird <laughs> language <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then after every shot so it's like uno mas and we're just like in bathtubs too right yeah there's all clearly the all these bathtubs, bathtubs. actually yeah. <laughs> so like well here's the thing is that like cindy's grandparents are like kind of old and they're also kind of wealthy so they have like a pretty nice tub uh, <laughs> like a jacuzzi yeah, tub? yeah i keep envisioning that we were like in a shack but i forgot that we're like on like a, a ranch you're, house you're, to a you're on a plantation yeah. basically like it's right. it's, it's nice. like a plantation home yeah um and the the tub comfortably would fit the three of you if you so chose to do so Cindy is asleep. Yeah, yeah. in her Bad bed, time. in her childhood. Bed. Why not? I'm gonna be Why so not? well rested. Yeah, there's yeah, it's decked out. There's plenty of robes. There's plenty of towels. There's like, man, it's so good. It's got it's got little jets in it. Um, there's a window no that overlooks the the farm. It's still drizzling. Anything else you guys want to RP here before you just take the slumber? I guess RP being hungover. Role play the next day. Oh yeah, you want yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anything the night of. No. Okay. Lawn rest would insinuate that you all sleep eight hours, and we'll suggest that Cindy sleeps ten because she's extra tired and she also went to bed right away. Does that seem fair for everyone? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, sounds good. It's like four p.m., five p.m. You're all starting to stir. I guess uh, Schmidt might be yeah. a little hungover. <laughs> Schmidt's a little hungover. I am probably not, but <laughs> I guess we can check for that, right? Did you con roll? If you that? want to, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to. Yeah. You've been through a lot, so I didn't want to make you suffer, but if you want to bring it upon yourself, you are more than welcome. <laughs> I'm on it. Okay. Let's go. Oh, I got a 15. I'm good. Yeah, you're fine. I got a 10. Maybe I'm a little hungover. You're a little queasy. You're a little nauseous. Yeah. I guess I should roll too. The the comp roll at disadvantage because you said you were drinking more. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Ellie. Uh, you're, you're, got... you're okay, but you're not feeling great. <laughs> Schmidt got a two. Yeah, dude, you're you're like barfing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, how how like, appropriate okay? across the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're straight up yeah. not having a good time. You definitely <laughs> wise old it. man doesn't get hung over. This is probably a little uh. A little bit stronger alcohol than he's used to in the city. <laughs> yeah. Cindy yeah. makes everybody a very nutritious berry-based uh, breakfast. Because mm -hmm. she can see that they're all not doing great. Warm berry <laughs> pancakes. Oh, yeah. Yep. I was just thinking like, oh, smoothies. Um, they're baked. Whatever. No, I'll make pancakes. Or berry pancakes. <laughs> we do straight up have a baker with us. So Yeah, we do actually. Okay, Cindy, harvest the berries for breakfast. <laughs> you can know. We can both make them some pancakes. Uh, there were the ropes making pancakes. Can I can I get a uh, can I get a a charisma from Elodie? Sure. Is a baking check? Yeah. Baking check. Baking check. I got check. eighteen. What was it? Eighteen. Everyone in the party gets a plus two to charisma checks for the next day. Woo! Oh, so good. Pancake charisma bonus. <laughs> charisma bonus. It's not much, but it's something. You know, it's good. 
plus two. <laughs> cool. So you have your um, your 5 p.m. breakfast. And once again, the sun <laughs> is already starting to set. Honestly, we've been through so much. I forget where we're going. Marvel. Uh, I think we're going to Marvel. I mean, we got to meet back up with Sam. I think. Don't, don't we have to like investigate what happened to your grandparents? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not here. We can investigate more. We haven't but, investigated like, the mansion. We investigated the basement. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd say as we're... Everyone else better than Schmidt, but as we're stirring th- through the day and the evening, because we're getting up at like 4 or 5 p.m., right? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we just spend the evening like just walking through the mansion, just investigating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think mansion might be a little generous, but it's like a it's an upper class house. I wouldn't say mansion. Yeah. It's not like sprawling, but it's My just it's a vacation home. It's a nice ass home, basically. Um, yeah, I guess if you're investigating, give me checks, I suppose. Yeah. Those of you who are doing that I might as well. Like, I'm not very good at this, but all right. I'll have Cindy investigate to oh, see if like yeah. anything's out Nothing specifically out of the like ordinary. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, OK, I got a 18. OK, I got a seven. Okay. Yeah, I love that proficiency in investigation. 18. Uh, you run around the house. You're looking for things. You're checking with Cindy. Like, is this normal? Is this normal? Is like, is this supposed to be here? And for the most part, everything is fine. Um, there's a couple places, especially by the front door, that seem to have been disturbed in a way that um, Goji and Asai would not do so. But there aren't any clues as to where they would be going soon like there's nothing on their calendar there's nothing on the on the counter there's nothing on the table in their bedroom besides information about the 50th annual lily cove city summer festival Um, there's nothing that would suggest that they've been back since then and there's nothing that would suggest that you know they're going to go anywhere else besides that you also managed to find some supplies you managed to find uh, a bunch of materials that were used to take care of the farmhand pokemon you come across five super potions. You come across two revives. You come across. Oh, yeah. Interestingly enough, you come across um, what is typically used as like a pesticide. But you have it. You have two super repels. Well, but as far as leads to where your grandparents might be, there really isn't anything. So it was five super potions, two revives, two repels, pesticide. Yeah. I think the okay. repels are pesticide. It's like the same thing. They have the same function, yeah. really. Oh, okay. They're super repels. Exactly. Super repels. Should we divide up the stuff? I mean, I, would... I, I think you should hold on to medicine-oriented things. So all of it? Yeah. <laughs> are all yeah. of the potions, at least? Should I take the revives, um, too? Or... How would we want to do this? I mean, I assume we each want to carry a potion, then you get the most. That's what, yeah, that's what I was going to say, is everybody gets one, and then I'll just get two. And then you just take the revives. Sure. And, good. and we'll give Schmidt the repels because he hates like bug stuff. <laughs> Question for the DM. Mm-hmm. Does Moo Moo milk expire? Uh, yeah, it's pasteurized pretty well. Um, are you concerned about your stash? Yeah, <laughs> um, it's fine. The cows that this Moo Moo milk comes from are the best cows in the world. The best milk tanks um, and they're like super pasteurized and you don't have to worry about it spoiling for a while. Fantasy milk. Fantasy milk. Fantasy milk. There's multiple of that in this campaign. There's the moo milk, and then there's also just the existence of cabbage. True, you're right. So now, you know, we're just kind of, um, what's the word? Montaging. It's once again like 8 p.m. It's nighttime. Um, You guys are vibing in this place. I mean, it's basically your stronghold at this point. Like, this this is like a base of operations for you now. Neat. Mark it on the map. I will do that. Home. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Home plenty of room. There's basically infinite food, although it could get boring, as Cindy is aware of. You can get sick of it pretty quickly. It's in a nice central location in the region. There's no one else that's here that it seems like. Oh, Should we stay we here spend, for tonight? Or? Yeah, I vote we spend one more night here and then, and then go to sure Bell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool with that. Um, do any of you, you're feeling much better. You're all rested up. You're dealing with, like, you know, the scene of all the stuff that happened yesterday from, like, a mighty Anna biting an innocent person on the neck, from dealing with Zoe's burial and all these crazy cryptic information. You're dealing with the night of getting restless sleep in a house full of wingles. You're dealing with the fact that Pumpkin became a monster and tried to kill you. 
and apparently did kill someone earlier in the day. Uh, you, you, this is the first time in a while where like your head is not cloudy and you could just kind of like do stuff. Do any of you. This, so this is what we call in D&D uh, free time. Do you want to do anything with yourself or with your Pokemon or like maybe do some research or like, you know, run around in the library or do you want to just want to like rest up? You do like um, a training regimen. You could talk amongst yourselves, whatever you want. Well, can you describe like the area that we're in? Because I might want to go out with my new Mons and train, especially because like Trevor like evolved. So we're going to like practice maneuvers and stuff. OK, sure. You're because I'm, I'm, I'm like starting to I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to get into this battle thing. I see why my son likes it. I've got to invest a little more. <laughs> OK, Um. yeah, you are on Route 123. It's mm-hmm. there isn't a whole lot going on here. There isn't like a, a particularly paved road. It's still just like a dirt road. Uh, yeah. People tend to walk this path if mm-hmm. they are heading to on the ferry, like to Mount Pyre that in, then takes you to Lily Cove City. It's really popular for people. It's the quickest way to go from Mauville to Lily Cove. So that's the right. main reason that people walk up and down this path. It is wooded to the south. Uh, there's a river bank that where Sam crossed the bridge to go to Mauville. That's to the yeah. west uh Mm. there's 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 light traffic there's a a good amount of wooded area pokemon it's right on the skirts outskirts of the jungle it's it's more rural than it is urban so i'm thinking that similar to like almost like sitting under waterfall training that Mm -hmm. i take my rock and fire pokemon and then bring them down to the river and i'm like all right guys we're gonna do something weird and i'm gonna sit there like we have to tank this and see how you can build up your tolerance to taking this damage oh that like, is that is cool it Jeez. seems to make sense to me so we're like okay everyone's coming out even our new our new friend lebowski do you and go to the river like to the west where you left with sam or do you go to the part of the river that's south of the plantation home uh south of the plantation home. okay cool yeah it's a little there's way less traffic here and it, the river is a little yeah. bit more calmer and you subject your rock and fire types to the river in the yeah. rain well i'm gonna be enthusiastic about it it's like it's time to train and they're gonna be like yes like get <laughs> i get excited we get excited <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... give them all context for trevor got a 18 uh-huh toidal also got an 18 okay and Lebowski, still still getting his his little non-existent feet wet um got a 10 you plop them down to like you know i guess the what would be their ankles or so in the river and they get battered around a little bit for the most part they do pretty well they kind of hate it but they understand it's for training purposes and it's not really hurting them it's just not really what they're used to yeah um i could describe that they're taking damage but this is also like before you go to sleep so it really doesn't yeah, matter yeah. um and yeah there's I do it with them in solidarity too so i'll roll my own con <laughs> okay yeah your, your check isn't quite as bad oh and my check was so much better uh <laughs> Dirty 23 yeah. yeah you're trying to demonstrate to them it's like look guys it's just like this and like you're not a rock so they don't really like get it uh, <laughs> and it's Paul Thor. you don't see any um specific improvements from your pokemon but you can tell that they got something out of it probably did that who else uh, team building um patricia still has a mystery move right um yeah it's like built into peck built into peck okay mm-hmm. i had it in some other trees. notes it's like so i don't want to just say the like mystery movie is, time. is a peck but like i guess i shouldn't put it that way i just like peck is just like your basic lame ass move right so this mystery mm-hmm. move would just go in place of it okay could we spend time investigating what this move is sure or how, like how do training you... with it trying to figure it out yeah what is your method um so there's like a library built in mm-hmm Maybe like going to the library and trying to find something. And if there's not something there, just doing it over and over again until we figure it out. Yeah. What kind of books are you looking for? I don't know. Books on Pokemon. You could go. So like you could do biology. You could do geography of like Alola. You could do um, like maybe Alola. Yeah. This is for Patricia. Oh, oops. I'm not investigating. We've yeah, been yeah, yeah. talking about different Pokemon. My bad. It's not built into Peck. The one for Patricia is just like out there okay my bad this mystery move yeah you could look for a biology book i suppose you could roll an investigation dirty 21 yeah wow you find a like a written pokedex on the pokemon of the hoenn region and you find swablu's page and um 
it describes really cool aspects about Swablu of how they enjoy being hats for people. Um, they are generally very kind hearted in nature, but they can have a destructive side. You can turn the page and see on the next page is the Pokemon Altaria, the evolved form of Swablu. And uh, it describes it as a dragon type Pokemon who is known to be very pleasant around people, but have a destructive side when provoked. It is known for its signature move, Dragon Dance. And that's the information that you get out of it. I'm guessing that this move is Dragon Dance, or is that all I'm getting out of it with that role? That's what you get out of the book. Okay. Um, could we, like, practice the move? Sure. Like, just to see if it is actually Dragon Dance? Yeah, give me, give me just a straight D20. That's a crit? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You see this in the book, and you're like, huh, I wonder. And you call out Patricia, and you just say... You know, I think I have a better idea of what this is. And you give it a try and Patricia just nails it. Um, Patricia no longer has a mystery move and Patricia just has Dragon Dance as a move. Uh, goodbye, safeguard. Uh, Cindy's free time and Elodie's free time. Cindy is hanging out with her Pokemon, like not exactly training, but just kind of like hanging out, having some hot cocoa, mm -hmm. getting everybody to know Pumpkin. Like Soli knows Pumpkin, but nobody else does. Right. So having a very chill day, but like... Still with the intent of like, OK, we're going to continue doing gym battles and stuff like that. OK, like visualizing winning, but like not actually physically training. Yeah, you have mental, mental care. <laughs> you have a good, nice, relaxing time with your Pokemon and your friend Pumpkin. As you're speaking with Pumpkin, roll a d20. 16. How do I want to do this? I could pull aside this, but I don't think I'm going to. You're hanging out with with pumpkin and pumpkin is just so happy you're here pumpkin loves you very much pumpkin gives you a very loving look and it taps a vine in the back of your head very gently and you're granted a little vision you see pumpkin hanging out in the house having a normal day nothing too crazy is going on goji and asai are not anywhere to be seen and then all of a sudden people scary people in uniform charge into the house there's about four or five ordinary looking people. And then there is one person, a man, and he is big. He's not quite as big as like the metal bird guy, but he is much wider. He's probably like six foot five and he's built like a linebacker and they are searching fervently for something. Pumpkin finds a place to hide and sees as they remove the rug from the from the living room and pull up the floorboard and descend into the basement that you were in. Pumpkin gets very scared and has a sense of duty and goes out into the into the berry farm and digs its way into the ground and f sees that they are attempting to break into this room where this artifact is kept. This green rock is kept. Uh, pumpkin implants itself into the wall in or in attempt to protect this artifact. And a couple of these grunts uh, try to break in and you witness a recreation a vision of when pumpkin had to defend himself from a grunt who tried to take this artifact and ended up killing him um eventually upon seeing this the the group retreats they all leave from the home and pumpkin is there under the berry farm waiting in service that's the vision that you get oh pumpkin pumpkin cries a little Just, bit what what the heck <laughs> It's a psychic type. <laughs> we put our own, if you will. Yeah. Whatever. Pumpkin experienced just... trauma. Okay. You just seem to I'm accept. Concerned about you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you seem to you. just keep seeing you these psychic visions. Get the vision you with be psychic type, maybe. But, yeah, but that the issue is not that pumpkin just like oh you got a cool cool. It, it just jabbed a slide into your head and injected a vision. Into your mind, and you're like, that's fine. <laughs> Cindy's been through so much. This is normal now. She got the spoink vision. She got like, oh, woken up vision, in the middle huh? of the Do night we by Zoe. Know about the spoink vision? Was that ever communicated to us? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we. I think at the beginning Cindy's of the second session, Cindy described it. Yeah, to we were, described it. Yeah. Okay. Is Cindy going to describe this vision to us, or are you keeping it to yourself? It's up to her. Uh, Cindy will tell everybody about the vision, okay. like. Cool. There were more than well, just the one grunt, and they ran away after the guy died. Well, good job, Pumpkin, I guess. Do you say that? <laughs> good job. <laughs> I mean, you gave us a run for our money, but good job defending it. Pumpkin gives you, like, a assuring nod. Okay. 
He, Cindy got the sense that Pumpkin wasn't really in full control when you confronted him. Right. It was Pumpkin more whatever that stone too. was that's now part of our big stone. Elodie. We are going to have a little joint baking and karaoke session. Me and my Oh, husband. wow. Karaoke? <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> awesome. Wait, Schmidt wants to get in on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can, you can join. But yeah, Ma- I imagine like... Poplio is, is has a very beautiful voice, and like Mudkip has has uproar. So like he, she's loud, but she doesn't sound very good. <laughs> and, yeah. and Cabbage is just beatboxing for them. Oh, <laughs> that is, and I'm baking, and Elodie's baking. That is so is sick, man. <laughs> I love the Cabbage just beatboxes. <laughs> I, I like. I don't even want to like make you roll. Like that's just so cool. Like I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it with a roll. Yeah, imagine if the show gets messed up. <laughs> yeah. That oh, that is so oh, sick. How do I That's actually super cool. Permit would like to roll yeah. for how well he sings. Okay. Please be Damn it, I crit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you it, it's awesome. I, I want it to be abysmal, but okay. Are, are did you come alone or did you have your Pokémon with you? Yeah, I have my Pokémon with me. All of them, all three of them? Yeah, sure. What's the what's the genre of the karaoke? Uh, That's a good question. Ooh, ooh. I feel like we should go like Broadway. Like I don't. <laughs> Although I guess the beatboxing. Uh, so Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah, we're de- <laughs> definitely doing like Pokemon Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Schmidt would definitely crit doing Hamilton. Yeah, that's okay. True. Okay, so like, so like musicals. Yes. Okay, roll Schmidt. Roll another D twenty, just a straight D twenty. That's a fifteen. Jessica, is moving. She loves the music. She's having such a good time. And you you notice that. She's she's doing like Broadway style dance moves. It's pretty cool. Sick. For the sick performance, I do have to I have to reward Elodie somehow. So I think I'm just gonna give a D8 oh. of inspiration to Elodie. Use however she's. Oh, to better. me. Yeah. Oh boy. Let's go! Yes. Yeah, I just I kinda clap my hands in support of we were watching this show. Great. <laughs> You all did a little bit of stuff. It some of yeah. it turned out good for you. Some of it turned out informative for you. It's the next morning. It's like you, you guys slept in. D one hundred. Yeah, do it. Do do I get anything because I have an incubator? Uh, let's give you. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a plus twenty five. Okay. Eighty seven. Eighty seven. Wow. Yeah, the incubator is clearly working. Oh my god. The oh no, eighty seven plus the twenty five. I just rolled natural eighty seven. Okay, so that's like over 100. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. This thing is wobbling. It's not ready to hatch, but like, man, okay. it's never been so cared for in uh, I don't know how long. Hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of years. This is crazy. <laughs> um, but it doesn't hatch. But oh, it's uh, so close. It's it's doing it. <laughs> good. Good job, Toidle. I see it moving now. <laughs> what's uh, what's the plan for the day? Uh, I think we gotta we gotta Start get heading to Marvel, right? Yeah. Okay. Are we gonna talk to the tiny gang, or I guess maybe fate will bring us back to them someday. <laughs> yes, someday. I, I guess we don't know if they're still there. Can were we, we write them a letter? Yeah, we're heading to Marvel. Okay. After yeah, let's just go to Marvel. Yeah, when we get to Marvel, we can check if we. Mm-hmm. I guess we don't know where they live, also, but I don't know. Let's just go to Marvel. Okay, yeah, that's fine. You guys march westward to Marvel. It's like nine p.m. or sorry, nine a.m. or ten a.m. Uh, and you walk over to the junction where Sam dropped you off, and you can see... Um, yes. Okay. Pumpkin coming with or no? Pumpkin feels the duty to stay behind and protect the okay. place. Um, okay. Cindy, you can try and talk him out of it, but as per your last kind of emotional discussion, in air quotes, because you can't really speak to each other, that's what you picked up. Yeah, I think Pumpkin should stay, because then they... Pumpkin will probably keep the place up kept so that way it won't get like super dirty while mm-hmm. my grandparents aren't there and while we're not there, back, so we still like have like Mr. a place Mime to of... stay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mime. That's what yeah. Pumpkin wants, and it's very happy that you agree that it's good for that. Mm. You can see to the west, across the river, are the bustling metropolitan skyscrapers of Mauville City. It is a very industrious cosmopolitan area. Uh, you're at the river where Sam dropped you off, but something is different the bridge that sam crossed to get there has been slashed in half Mm. 
there is a river bank that is about 20 feet across that you'd have to cross to get there. And I think I can cross it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's Straight going to investigate the the bridge. Okay, roll it. Now one. You are taking a look at this bridge, and you're like, I, I don't know what this is. I, I you know, I can't tell. That bridge is sure broken. I've never seen a bridge before. <laughs> What's a bridge? I don't know. And then, <laughs> and then there's a bit of the sound of very heavy feet landing in the sand behind you. It's none other than the tall metal guy. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck, I'm this guy. <laughs> he looks at you all, and he says, you have something that I want. No, we don't. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. He says, I don't want to fight. I just want to see it. See so what? He's going to try and deceive him and just be like straight up like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, give it a shot. I rolled a two. Okay. You're doing so great. But with my modifiers, <laughs> that's a six. He says, I know that the witch gave it to you. I don't want it for myself. I just need to look at it for a moment. Can I like do like a an uh, like an insight or something? Absolutely. To see if he's being honest? You totally can. Nat twenty. Um. Yeah, you can tell this guy. He's so stoic. He probably cannot lie. Um. I mean, I Someone guess. Is- can we make sure there's no one else around that's gonna like yoink it from us while he is like. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty quiet. Like only on the other side of the river is there any activity, but where you're at is very rural. There's not really anything going on. I mean, I think ultimately it's your decision, Cindy, but I'm fine with with showing it to him. But he can't touch it. He like says, I feel like if I'm if I'm holding it, like just to make sure that he doesn't um, take it or anything. Can somebody like try and like Oof, what? Know what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I'm just saying words. Well, that's um, the condition, right? If somebody can, like, protect Sh- it or something, I don't know. Look, looky, no touchy. Schmick commands Quacko to draw a sword, and Quacko will protect Cindy. He says, I don't need to touch it, but I do request that my partner touches it. I just need to look upon it, and that is all that I need. Your partner? He says, yes. And he taps one of his heavy balls, and before you, you see a large raven Pokemon that is completely covered in metal. He says... Yeah. If you're having trouble here, I would not mind granting you passage across this waterway in exchange or any other favor you might need. He Mm. seems pretty desperate. Right. Do you know anything about what this rock does? Would if we let you see it, would you tell us what it does? He says, if it behaves in the way that I believe that it does. Yes. Okay. Well, that's information. Like, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm told. Like, so yeah. On it. Ultimately, it okay. is up to uh, Cindy, Cindy pulls but... it out of her bag, but keeps like a really tight grip on it. This giant man doesn't really have to move at all to get a good look. Again, he's like eight feet tall. His large metal bird beside him, which is like close to six feet tall, it is very, very large. It is larger than most people. Um, it outstretches a wing and it taps its feather onto this rock with the diamonds on it. The diamonds glow in color but they glow in two different colors one of them lets off a lustrous gray hue and the other one is kind of a airy cloudy blue um the man appears down at the stone from above and he says perfect and he recalls corviknight and he says i must leave now that artifact that you have is a locator it is a key or a codex as one might describe it allows you to find objects of incredible power and one that I've been seeking my entire life. And he says, would any of you like a ride across this river? Sure. (laughs) He he throws out his Corviknight and his Skarmory and they effortlessly carry you across the other side. Mm -hmm. And he says, if that is all, can we tell him about the, the grunt that died? Nope. nope. Okay. What if he has a family? I don't think this guy's part of the team or anything. I don't, I don't think, think so he would either. know. No, I don't think so. Uh, okay. He seems like not part of it's kind of thing on his own. Yeah. yeah. Can I just ask, like, what are what are you looking for? 
He says, I'm looking for something that was removed from my family generations ago. And to restore mm. honor, I must bring it back. Samurai type. Gotcha. He grabs on to the Talon of Skarmory and takes off to the north unless you stop him. We won't. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. He does that. I yell um, at him as he goes, and I'm like, goodbye, bird friend. He, let me see. I'm going to roll for this. He's pretty stoic. Yeah, he gives you like a very slight wave. He just kind of like hey. lifts up his other hand and <laughs> he waves it to you. New um, eight foot tall friend. <laughs> so with that, you all march into Marvel City. Some immediate points of interest stand out to you. Besides the hordes and hordes of people and traffic and Pokemon and vehicles and po- bird Pokemon flying around everywhere, uh, you each are notice some important looking buildings. There's a Pokemon gym, very, very clearly. Couldn't be anything else. There's skyscrapers, commercial districts that are full of offices, businesses, all that jazz. There's so much activity here. Um, there is a cultural center with a large performing arts building. It says um, MPAC, the Marvel Performing Arts Center. There is a building that stands out from the rest because it is not made from steel and glass. It is made from marble and stone. And it seems to be a place of worship. And it is unlike all the other buildings there. And in the center of town, at a gazebo, is a statue of a woman. She is in a ceremonial outfit of some sort. And she stands very tall. This is a very large, pretty modern statue. And there's a plaque on the front that reads, Champion May, Hero of the Hoenn Region. And without getting too far into it, if there's anything you'd like to do... We um, gonna be checking out that performing arts center later. Yeah, yeah. casinos <laughs> and or clubs. <laughs> there is in fact a casino, and you, there's definitely some nightlife around here for sure. Okay, it's a little there's early in the day just... to go to a club, but there's one that you can <laughs> see the just the part of the district that is closest to your attention. The noisy chat tot, name of a club that you can see. Noisy chat tot. Okay, and I okay. think with that is where we will call the session tonight. Thank you for listening to this week's session of Dunsparce and Drampa. If you're enjoying the series, be sure to follow or subscribe and visit the links in the description or by visiting linktree slash Dunsparce. We would like to give special thanks to listeners Omega and Mel. These two amazing, wonderful, incredible people are our latest patrons on our Patreon. By supporting the campaign, they gain access to all sorts of extra content, including extra recordings, exclusive artwork, the ability to directly add content to the story, sneak peeks at future projects, and more. You can find them at patreon.com slash dunsparse or by finding the link on our Linktree page. See you all next week. The current scent where you are is very dank. Yeah. And not like that. It's dank like it's like musty. (laughs) There's a weed down here. No one was there. (laughs) And then you brought us there. I know. Well, I'm sure one of you is farm. We don't know what else they're farming. The real (laughs) cash crop, you know what I'm saying? Hey. It's like, yeah, what were your grandparents farming over here? (laughs) They're just really good at berries. Picture Rill's eyes are bloodshot for a reason, guys. Oh. Richie, Richie, it's literally bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>